Hello YouTube, this is my part three update on my trailer progress in rebuilding my trailer. So I'll show you what I've got done so far. I've got it all in individual pieces. Everything is apart now. Only exception is I probably could break down these pieces. This is part of the support that goes with the tongue for the folding part. I've got the two pieces on either side still attached. I may leave it that way just for convenience sake. But the next part after I get, I'm going to take care of some of the rust on them, but see I've got this box here. This is an antenna box. I'm going to put these pieces in maybe three boxes similar to this. I might have to make the other two just a little bit bigger and box them all up. I've also taken off on the axle. I took off the springs and I'm going to uh, put them in a separate area too just to all fit in nice long thin boxes. I'll have to create them from scratch out of pieces of cardboard but no big deal. But what I've also been doing as I've had these apart, see how that looks kind of like shiny and jet black there? There's some stuff I've got called Extend Rust Treatment that takes the surface rust and just locks it up to where basically now it's ready to paint over. If you want it to look even prettier, you can sand it down and then, you know, put the paint over it that way. But for a utility trailer, I'm not going to bother to make it cosmetically perfect. And here's the two bent pieces just to show you a comparison. This one I did the rust treatment. This one I haven't done rust treatment yet, but there's still a lot of more work. These ones are what needs to be straightened up. And those every all the pieces that need to be worked on, I'm going to actually put them in their own box too. And then the pieces that are already fairly straight, like for example this one, this one, these pieces over here, they don't need to be straightened. They're just, it's basically cosmetics. It's just grinding the rust off with a wire brush and uh, putting some rust treatment on them. What I decided to do with this piece, now this is my back piece. I took the tail lights off of it, but this is the very, right there is the very back edge of the trailer. And I told you I wanted a flat spot to be able to put a jack stand against. And I was thinking of all kinds of different complicated ideas. And finally I thought, well, I could just make it simple. All it is, it doesn't have to really be extra support for the weight because this thing didn't bend or, uh, you know, have any problems with supporting the weight even when it was abused before. But I just like a more flat area across here to put a jack stand. So really all I needed was a piece of wood and I had this treated piece of wood that's been sitting around for I don't know over 10 years I mean the thing has dried out so much it's so hard you couldn't even pound a nail through it without bending it and then besides that you can kinda of see the shine on it I put a coat of polyurethane well several coats of polyurethane on it and basically I'm just gonna take it and I'm just going to uh, use some wood screws this thing has got you can probably see the tiny holes in here it's got tiny holes. You can use them for mounting the deck from this side or you can go from the other side and use it to mount this piece of wood underneath here. And It's certainly, since it's a treated piece of wood to start with and then I've also put the polyurethane on it, it's certainly going to last another 10 years if not a lot longer. As a matter of fact, the table that I'm working on, my workbench is a picnic table and it was so dried out after staying outside even in the winter. It used to have piles of snow on it and everything. I put like three coats of polyurethane on it. First two coats soaked right into the wood and then finally the third coat actually stayed on top. And it basically, it turns the wood into like a piece of uh, composite uh, wood and plastic. And this is the stuff. It's not cheap at all. Minwax owns it now. I think it used to be its own company, but now Minwax owns it. But get the Helmsman Spar Urethane. I use the semi-gloss. It doesn't matter. You can use the, the satin or the uh, full gloss, whatever. But yeah, this, this is really good stuff. Not cheap, but it does. It soaks down into the wood and it turns probably about the top quarter of an inch of wood into solid plastic. So the chances of this, I, I would be pretty sure that this thing right here, if I took it apart and just wiped it off in about two or three years from being outside and showed it to you, it would not look that much different. So that's what I'm going to put there to support the jack stand for when I'm loading the trailer. I won't need it for loading wood and stuff like that, but for when I'm loading motorcycles. But uh, let's see, the other thing I wanted to tell you, yeah, uh, to, to be able to get to some of the rust, um, these channels, like for example right here, a regular uh, wire wheel will not quite reach them the kind that you can buy and get for your drill so I had to actually modify something this is the this is the standard wire wheel you get to use with a, a drill like that and it will not quite reach down into the channels because the shaft hits it's just not tall enough and the only ones that are tall enough are the kind that you get for a um, stationary type of uh, you know like your grinders and your table grinders and stuff like that too you can switch out and put a wheel so Amazon had a special arbor. It's a 
one quarter inch to half inch arbor that you can make these work. Now it's probably not recommended to do this. This is quite a lot to carry on a drill, but I think it works just fine myself. And as usual, when you use any of these things, you absolutely must, must use eye protection because as you use this, uh, I found it with this wheel too, these little tiny wire bristles, they will come loose and come flying. So you'll get some uh, flying at you and flying away from you and whatever. So um, don't risk your eyesight with these things without using that kind of protection and make sure your arbor is tight and make sure it's tight in your drill itself or you can hurt yourself. But it's working really great so far this way. So yeah, um, not sure what else to show you. I think that's pretty much the progress that I've made so far. Uh, might go ahead and do the boxing. It seems a lot of times I think something's not that interesting on YouTube and you guys say, well, I wish you would have showed that part. So maybe I'll show constructing the boxes and packing it up and things like that. But uh, basically right now it's ready to just be boxed up and then put in back of the Jeep to uh, be ready to go. It's uh, four weeks away before the meetup in Ohio, but still that time's going to go fast if I uh, goof around too much. So I think I'll spend the next two or three days wire brushing the rust off, putting some more of the rust proof coating on it. And here's the rust proof coating, by the way, too. Let me show you that. I almost forgot that. This is the kind I use. I've actually used this stuff, uh, the Extend Rust Neutralizer. This has been out since the late 70s. It wasn't owned by Loctite originally. I think it was just its own company called Extend. Or you can get another container of it, which seems to me the same stuff. I've tried this plastic coat rust converter. It's pretty much the same thing. It's slightly thinner. It doesn't seem to be quite as thick as this stuff here. But... It just it all just depends on how much this is like 16 ounces here um, this is like how many ounces I don't know eight ounces this is this is half as much but the prices are pretty comparable right now but basically just go by whatever is the cheapest one I mean if you can get twice as much as, as this um, for a better price just compare your price per ounce and get whatever is the best deal I think they both work roughly the same they're both roughly the same quality not enough that I would be concerned with. The main thing is getting at least several coats on. For for example, this right here, um, I put three coats on to get it to be black. Like sometimes you can get it with two coats if the rust is not too thick, but uh, a lot of times you're going to need three coats of it. So until it turns shiny and black and it's nice and thick on there, you can tell when it's finally worked and it's not going to get any darker. Um, it goes on kind of pink and foamy looking, but it always dries clear on the non-rust parts and it always dries black on the rust parts. For some reason, it's a chemical reaction or something like that. So, Anyway, that's about it for part three. I uh, may or may not do part four about the cardboard, making the cardboard and boxing it. Or uh, I may or may not. I'm not sure. So, Take care, everybody. Talk to you later.